As we continue talking about faith in God and how to exercise faith in God and different aspects of our faith in God, this morning I want to bring our attention to another aspect of our faith in God, which is faith that endures. Faith that endures. The endurance aspect of faith. You know, uh, uh, sometimes we think that faith is a quick fix. You know, you have faith in God and He'll just fix your problems. He'll heal your body. He'll bring provision. He will do this. He will do that. And sometimes we tend to look at faith as though it is a quick fix to all our problems and, and, all of, uh, and, and difficulties and challenges. But what I want us to understand, that faith in God is not just some, you know, a good luck charm, you know, you push the button, out comes God's Coke can of supply. Uh, it's not something like that. Faith in God is, is something that you and I must learn to walk in with endurance. It is the, it is, we must understand the endurance aspect of our walk of faith. And I want us to spend some time on that this morning. Let's turn in our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11, please. Hebrews chapter 11. We'll read verses 33 to 39. Hebrews chapter 11 verses 33 to 39. It says, Who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, Became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Let's stop there. Verses 33 down to verse 35 where we stop. This is a list of some amazing victories that people accomplished through faith. Through faith, they were able to subdue kingdoms. They were able to do righteousness. They were able to conquer kingdoms. Stop the mouths of lions and, and put to flight the armies of the aliens and so on. Amazing uh, triumphs through faith. But then as you continue, you see the other side of faith. Continuing in verse five, 35 from every stop. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had the trial of mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were tempted, they were slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth. And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. What the writer of Hebrews is doing for us, he's, he's, he's giving us a list of these faith heroes who accomplished great things through faith. And then he tells us there were others who had faith in God and then they were able to go through some really difficult times in life. They were tortured for Christ. They were beaten. They suffered death. They suffered the violence of sword and they, they ex experienced all kinds of hardships. And then he concludes in verse 37, 39, he says, all of them obtained a good report through faith. That means God gave them all a hundred on hundreds. Good reports. So some had great achievements through faith. But others demonstrated great endurance also through faith. And God said, all of you have done well. Amen? So I want us to talk about the endurance aspect of faith where... Sometimes you've got to go through some stuff in life and not allow your faith to be shaken. The endurance dimension of faith. When we talk about, in, uh, let's continue in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 4, uh, just as, as the writer continues in Hebrews, verse, chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, saying, you know, brothers, you know, we, we've seen these heroes of faith who have gone ahead of us. They have left for us their life testimony. He says, we are also surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us do something. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him 
who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. So he's saying, listen, we've got this great cloud of witnesses, all these heroes of faith who've gone on before us. Their life still speaks to us. So let us, we who are alive, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Our eyes are fixed upon Jesus. He is the author and the finisher, the originator and the completer. He is the source and he's the destination of our faith. Let's keep our eyes on Jesus and run with endurance this faith, this race that is set before us. And he says, and then be careful. Don't let any sin come upon you and ensnare you. You know, Jesus struggled against sin in order to complete the call that was on his life. And you and I must be like that. Don't let any sin ensnare you. And he says, listen, brothers, you and I, in our struggle against sin, we have not reached the point where we needed to shed blood. But encourage yourselves about Jesus, who in his struggle for, against sin, he had to shed his own blood. Amen. Some are saying, you know, how can I run this race? There are all these sins that are pulling me down. There's all these, these weights that are hanging off of me. How can I run this race? How can I fight these things to keep running the race? He says, look to Jesus. Don't get weary in your soul. Because Jesus, in his fight against sin, he went all the way till he had to shed his own blood. And he says, you haven't reached that stage yet. In your fight against sin. So keep running with endurance the race that is set before you. When we talk about faith that endures, there are two dimensions that we need. There are a couple of different things we need to talk about. First, we need to talk about endurance through time. That's a big challenge. Enduring through time. You know, it's so easy when somebody says, you know, wow, pastor, God is using me today and uh, I'm healing the sick and casting out devils. And I like to say, let's come back to me in 20 years. We'll see where you are. Because that's the real test. In 20 years, will you still be doing what you're doing today? That's the test. Faith that endures through time. That can stand the test of time. Then we also have to talk about faith that endures through trials, tribulations, and tests. What kind of faith do you carry? Do you carry a flimsy kind of faith where, you know, if God blesses me, I'll follow God. If he doesn't bless me, I'll follow somebody else. God better watch out. <laughs> Is that the kind of faith you and I have? Or do we have the kind of faith that says, God, my faith will stand the test of time. It will stand through trials. It will stand through adversity. It will stand through any challenge that comes my way. That's the kind of faith I want to develop. That's the kind of faith I want to have in God. Abraham is a great example of a man whose faith stood the test of time. You and I are familiar with this story. When God came to him at the age of 75, he said, you know, I'll give you a son. I'll make you a great nation. And, you know, it's like somebody giving us a prophecy and saying, you know, uh, I'm going to bless you. And I'm going to do this and this and this through your life. And we all get so excited and we think it's going to happen tomorrow. Tomorrow comes and goes and it still does, it doesn't happen. We think maybe day after. And day after comes and goes and it doesn't happen. We think maybe I'll give God three days. You know, he took three days to raise Jesus up. So maybe he needs three days to fulfill his prophecy in my life. I give him three days. Three days come and go and, and nothing happens. And then your faith begins to waver. But not so with Abraham. He stood the test of time. And what God could have done in nine months in the natural process, God took 25 years. And Abraham stood that, endured, that period of time. His faith endured 25 years. Until he saw the fulfillment of what God had spoken in his life. And today the Bible says in Romans chapter 4. Abraham is the, the daddy. The father of faith. I want you to walk in his steps. Follow the steps of the faith of Abraham. If you want to imitate somebody in their life of faith. God says imitate Abraham. His faith stood the test of time. And Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. It says, Hebrews 6 12 again, familiar verses. It says, do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience or endurance 
inherit the promises. God says don't be sluggish. Don't be lazy. But look at the examples of people who through faith plus endurance inherited, possessed the promise of God. So is there endurance to your faith? Because we need faith plus endurance to inherit the promises of God. And over in chapter 10, verses 35 and 36. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 35 and 36. The Bible says, Therefore do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive. The promise. Don't cast away your confidence. There is a great reward. You've got confidence in God. You've got faith in God. That God would do such a such a thing in your life. That the promise you're believing will be fulfilled. The provision you're expecting will come. Uh, the miracle you're waiting on will come. You've got that faith. Don't let it go. Because there is a reward. However, here's something you need. You need endurance. So that after you've done the will of God. After you've done what is right before God. After you've obeyed the word of God. You need endurance in order to receive the promise. Amen. Now some of us say, okay, God, I have a need. Pastor said, give your, give your tithes and offerings. So you come and give your tithe and offering. And next day you're waiting for, you know, to win the lottery or something. I'm not saying, don't go buy lottery tickets. But you're waiting that something's going to happen the next day. And then you tithe and give an offering another month. And, and then you're waiting the next month something happens. And maybe something doesn't happen. And then you're wondering like, no, no, no. This tithe and offering is only a trick by pastor to get my money. 